Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more Aurora 4X. So, I uh, spent some time thinking about this, and again, I want to have an engine that is going to be classed as a military engine for a very specific reason with the grav sensors. And um, I think what the way that I'm going to do that is uh, we're just going to make it a, a 20 hull size, which is going to be a thousand tons. And I'm going to just use 20 hull size because I like the idea that each engine is a thousand tons. Just easy, easy math, basically, for me. Uh, we are going to scale back a little bit on the engine power because I was looking at these ratios and I, you know, you lose 25% power to cut your fuel usage in half. That seems like a pretty good deal. Um, and also, the research cost goes down as you scale back the engine power. We could take it even smaller, um, you know, go down a little bit more and just make the research points even lower. Um, since we know for sure it's not going to be classed as uh, commercial anyway, there's no real reason to try to hit the sweet spot of engine power 0.5. Um, and it, you'll notice that as we scale back the engine power, the tonnage stays the same. So you got to consider like the thrust versus weight ratio, you know, that whole thing. Like um, a 50 engine power engine with a thousand ton weight is going to be not as strong as a 60 engine power with a thousand ton weight. Like it's going to have a lot more, uh, a better, more favorable ratio. So. Since we know that it's not going to be a, um, a commercial engine, I'm going to go ahead and just use a not particularly efficient. It's only going to cost, you know, 0.39 liters per engine hour. And if we wanted to, we could get this down to like way, way, way less. But I want the engine to be pretty strong. And uh, I'm not, not too worried about 281 research points. We could, we could name this thing something special. Um, but I actually find that, I don't know, my experience, if I put like Ikea here or something, it's funny. But it's also, it takes up a lot of space in the, the very, there's just so much information. So let's just not name it anything for now. And uh, let's go ahead and go back to our research screen and get this thing researched. So this is going to show up under power and propulsion. And we've got the 75 engine power nuclear thermal engine. Um, we will have Neil deGrasse Tyson work on that for us. And we want these things to be done at about the same time yet again. So... And remove a research lab from the geological survey sensors, add one to here, and we're looking at, yeah, within a month or so, um, toward the end of December 22. So at the end of this year, we're going to be able to put together our first ship and get that thing launched off into space. Let's go back to five-day advancements. We should see our overall industry and, like, production going up tremendously right now, because a lot of that conventional industry is been getting converted over. It does take a, a good number of years. But the thing is that it snowballs. As you as you convert things over, they uh, they go faster. All right, Ken Ham his uh, <laughs> Ken Ham geological survey sensors. And what he was doing is he was looking for uh, you know dinosaur bones. Couldn't find any. No, he did. He found dinosaur bones. So we've got uh, a little long way to go here. We're now producing 2,000 construction per year. So we've doubled our construction rate since we've converted a little bit of this, which is good. Um, we can go back to research. We've got three research labs available. We can chunk those into Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's only going to save us like two, three days at a time here, so it's probably not worthwhile. Um, I mean, we're what? First, sixth, eleventh, sixteenth. Like it should be done by then anyway. Let's just ensure it. I guess we'll go like that. That way, it's just two more ticks. We'll start up another job. Something else that we would like to maybe get done at some point is the fuel consumption: 0.9 liters per engine hour. Um, do we have any other people in power in production? Yeah, let's have Olivia, Olivia Coates here. Oliver, sorry. <laughs> I called you Olivia. Oops. All right, and then we'll just advance uh, a couple more ticks. And now Neil deGrasse Tyson has completed research into the 75 engine power nuclear thermal engine. Okay, um, now what we can do is actually cancel the mission or the job that Oliver Coates was doing. He's done a tiny bit of research, like six points, and we don't lose this when we cancel his job. And we'll have Neil deGrasse take over. See how it's 994 out of 1,000 remaining? So we'll have uh, Neil deGrasse get in charge of that now. With probably all five research labs. Sure, why not? Seems like good good tech to have. Um, actually, no. I don't want to be that specialized. We'll kind of we'll do it the opposite of what I normally do. We're going to have people um, kind of spread out a little bit. I want a little bit of construction rate. Um, we're going to use just one on him. We'll have some mining production. Each mine right now produces 10 tons. This research gives us 12 tons. Same thing with the construction rate. Each construction gives 10. It'll now give 12. 
Um, we'll have this guy take car charge of that. What we're trying to do basically is get these guys to get better. Get them to level up a little bit. Uh, a little bit more into research rate could be cool. And we'll kind of shuffle them around a bit. What else could we work on that might make sense? Uh, Duranium armor we definitely want. We do have Ken Ham specializes in defensive systems. By all means, dude. Knock out some Duranium armor. This is going to give us, instead of using conventional armor for our first ship, we can actually get um, Duranium armor, which is going to lower the cost in two ways. Number one, it'll be cheaper to build. Number two, it will weigh less, which will make it go faster, which is great. Um, so the question is actually, do we want to wait maybe until March to design our first ship? I think so. I mean, we just wait a little bit, let Duranium, let, let him get it done. Annual RP. Oh, that's March of 24. It's two years. Hmm. Okay, nope. Changed my mind. We're going to cancel these jobs. I want, I want that now. I think we do want Duranium armor before we design the ship. So let's add all of our research labs to that. Get that in March. And we'll go until then. It's going to be significant. In fact, why don't, we, why don't we design a ship now without that armor? And then we will create a new ship with the armor, and we could see the actual effect of what we waited for. Although not currently assigned a research project, scientist Oliver has studied hard and increased his research bonus. Cool. By how much? To 10%? Cool. Good job, dude. See? You don't have to be... You don't have to have a research lab to get better. Alright, so we'll go and we'll design our first ship, the Discovery Class, Geo Survey Ship. It's going to use our 75 engine power nuclear thermal engine. It's going to have a movement speed of 2,500 kilometers per second. It's pretty quick. Uh, it needs geological survey sensors. That's going to slow it down because the geological survey sensors have a... This is the cost that we have to pay in Iridium. And they have a size of 5. When it says size 5, it's actually talking about like each each one, I think, is uh, 50 tons. So 5 times 50 is 250 tons. You take that back off and the ship goes down by more than that. And the reason why is because look at the crew size. 25 crew you throw the geological survey sensors on there. Now it needs 35 crew, which means that it adds, added automatically for us some more crew storage and, and stuff. So uh, we gained a little bit of tonnage. It's an 1800 ton vehicle uh, or ship, whatever you want to call it. It is considered military, which means that we do have to worry about maintenance. So it has a maintenance life of three years. This MSP, if you ever get confused by this, you can go over to Glossary of Terms and you can see over here, MSP is the storage capacity for maintenance supplies. So, Maintenance Storage Points, I believe is that acronym. So, we can store 63. The max repair cost of any item that's on the ship is that Geological Survey Sensor, uh, which, is, which is a cost of 1, 100. Which gives it um, an annual fail rate of only 25%. We, we would like the maintenance life to be a little bit longer, though, so let's throw a little bit more engineering space on there. That should up our maintenance life to 7 years, that's pretty good. We're going to have a deployment time of a, you know, about seven years, probably. Maybe even 60, let's just say 60 months, five years should be good. Um, unfortunately, we did lose some speed by adding the uh, adding the deployment time, because, it, again, it's in, given us more crew space. Watch, we go down, and uh, it's faster without the deployment time, but we do need that. Uh, now our maintenance life is 6.72 years, and it's got an annual fail rate of only 16%. That means that each year there's a chance, 16% chance, that something on the ship might break down. Um, increment, uh, IFR is what again? Incremental failure rate. The chance the ship will suffer a component failure during a single five-day incremental period. So it's pretty darn low. Only 0.2% chance. One year, five. Five year, 77. So this is projecting how many maintenance points we're going to use over the course of one year. It's projecting five. And we have 134 on the ship. And over a five-year period, 77. And that's where that 6.72-year projected maintenance life comes from. It's taking the maintenance supply points and dividing all the number out and saying, yeah, on average, it's probably going to last about that long. And then that just means you got to send it home and get it repaired. So that's fine. Fuel use, 38.97%. Hmm, okay, sure. It can go 11 billion kilometers in 71 days. It's pretty damn fast for a very first ship. Um, we're going to want it to go... We want it to have a little bit longer range. I think um, maybe somewhere between like 30 and 50 billion kilometers would be good. And the way we're going to judge that is we want to be able to survey the interior of the solar system. We don't want to worry about these comets, like the Halley-Bopp comet or the uh, 
Are there any others that are further further or farther away? We got the McNaught Russell and the Brooks. Like these things are gonna travel really far away from us. Haley's comet is currently passing through our solar system. Um, a real life comet, of course. Uh, it's gonna go really far away. In fact, I think all of these things are real life comets. Like we used to set up at the beginning of the game that said, uh, you know, use real life stuff. So we don't want it, our ship to go track those things down in distant distant areas. So we really only want to range uh, from about the center of the solar system to maybe about, about out here. So we're going to measure that distance by using shift. That's going to be about... Looks like about 10,000 million kilometers, which would be... Uh, carry the one... No. Uh, that'd be about 10 billion kilometers, actually, yeah. So we want to be able to go that far and then back. So we want a range of about 20 to 30 billion kilometers, I think. So let's go back to our ship design. It saves everything as we're working on it, so you don't have to worry about clicking save. Um... Why don't we give it a range of, instead of 11 billion, we'll throw another fuel thing on there. It's going to slow us down again. We're at 1875. But now we have a range of 22 billion. Let's throw even one more. 33 billion. 1785 kilometers a second. And, uh, yeah. It's going to get the job done. 6.73 year maintenance life. Uh, let's go ahead and say that that is our ship. But before we build it, remember, we're using conventional armor. So when we look at the component summary, we can see here we've got conventional armor on here. 7.3, I believe that would be, what, units or sections or something. So it has a size of 7.3 hull size points, which again, each each hull size point is 50 tons. So we're spending 17.4% um, of the size of the ship is, is conventional armor. We're going to wait for that duranium armor so that we can actually reduce the weight of the ship. Um... And that's going to help out quite a bit. So let's wait until we get that research, and then we will update and copy it, and then we'll use that one. A team on Earth led by Ken Ham has completed research into the Duranium Armor. Okay, let's go back now and get all our construction production stuff going. So we want uh, Bill Nye to work with one lab on construction rate. We want um, mining production. We want research rate. We also want to do... What else do we need? We're going to want to research cryogenic transportation soon, so that we can start shipping people around. Um, I think that, that might not be a bad idea to get somebody working on that. And we're also going to want to have, at some point, larger fuel storage. But we don't have any other scientists with that specialization. So Ken, Ken Ham, this is all you. All right, so we'll just work on those a little bit. It's going to take quite a few years um, with the number of research points that we have right now. Uh, look at that. It's projecting 10 years for Bill Nye to research this, this thing. So we're going to want to probably end up specializing a little bit more. But I want to give them some a little bit of a chance you know, to, to practice. So now let's go back to our ship design. And what we can do is we just create a copy of their current ship. So we have a discovery and we have a discovery copy. And what we can do is we can go down here and we say new armor. If the class does not use the latest armor, this button changes the armor to the latest type. So we'll say new armor. And now we can compare the two. So now we're using duranium armor, which has an amount of 2.7 and a size of 2.7. So we just saved five hull, hull points. It's 250 tons. So the total size of the ship went from 2,000 tons with a regular discovery, 2,100 in fact, down to 1,850. Look at the speed difference there, from 1785 up to 2000. And actually, this gave it increased range because it, it weighs less, it's more fuel efficient or whatever, I don't know. Um, no, 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 it's not more fuel efficient. It's just it has more range because um, it weighs less, it goes faster. So that's pretty good. Um, and it can get to the, it can go really far in 200 days. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go build one. So we're going to delete our regular discovery. We're going to rename our copy to the regular discovery and then we're going to lock the design so that we don't make any changes to it again in the future and now we can go back to our shipyard which again you notice how we uh we can build ships that are up to six thousand tons and the ship that we just designed is only like 20 what 18 7 1800 1850 so i didn't even need to really upgrade the slipway very much but we're going to go ahead and retool the spacex um shipyard to be able to build our 
discovery. The GE stands for um, gravitational, or not gravitational, geo, geo survey, um, I think is what it is. That's the class of the ship. So we're going to make the GE discovery 001. So we just repurposed this. This is the class of the shipyard now. It can make that ship. Um, and now we're going to tell it to construct one ship. It's going to have a cost of 233. We'll go ahead and add that task. And uh, let's uh, get going on it. So, I want to see all bodies. Focus on Earth. Back to the display. Oh, where was Earth again? Yeah, Earth, Mars, somewhere around there. It's fine. Earth's hiding next to something. The N N N key asteroid or well, comet. Okay, so um, all we need to do now is just wait for the ship to get built. It's going to take till January of 2024, so a little under a year. Let's go ahead and do 30 day turns until something interesting happens. Commanders are apparently dying. All right, the Discovery 001 Discovery class was built on Earth and assigned to the Shipyard Task Group. So, oh, also Ken Ham got better at his research bonus. That's pretty nice. All right, so now we can start doing task groups. So, we have just one task group right now, the Shipyard Task Group. That's where all ships go. We're going to rename that into the Space Shipyard Task Group um, so that it always shows up at the top of the list. And then we can see in this task group is the GE Discovery 01. We're going we're gonna to assign this to, uh, to something. The fleet was created... Uh, Let's see. Someone's going to get appointed to it when we create a new ship, a new thing. So we're going to grab the ship and detach it into its own group. So we have the GE Discovery 001. And for the sake of keeping things organized, we're going to rename it so we know what this thing does. This is going to be our uh, Geo Survey Task Group. Oh, so a number on there as well. So I might make two of these ships. It depends on, I mean, this ship is really fast, much faster than I normally make. But we might still make two. You know what? Actually, I think I'm just going to do one. Let's just call it the Task Group 1. We're not going to make a second ship. This thing is fast. 2,000... Way faster than my normal ships. For a very first ship, it's pretty quick. So, um, now Task Force Training, I don't think really matters for the sake of geo-surveying, but this is one of the settings that I did at the beginning of the game where what we should do is we should say, hey, start your Task Force Training. And so then they're going to go like do some training exercises, you know, burn some fuel and do some flybys. Um, but we're not going to have to do that because this is not a military, like it is a military ship, but it's not going to actually do a combat and stuff. It's just going to go like scan down rocks and things. So I don't think we need to worry about task force training. Um, and I think this ship is, uh, it's pretty good to go. So let's give it some special orders. We're going to tell it that it is a, uh, it's a geo ship. So survey the next five system bodies. We're also going to make sure that it, it knows that it needs to keep its fuel up. So with a range of 37 billion kilometers I think we could probably get away with refuel at less than 40%. So if you're less than 40% fuel, why don't you come on home, get some fuel, and uh, go from there. So I don't, even need to, I don't need to tell it to do anything else. It's automatically going to pick up new assignments based on that conditional order. So its default orders are to, if no other orders are set, try to survey the next five system bodies. So right now it has nothing, but the very next tick, if we just go five days, and then we go check on the task group again, it's going to have, you know, survey Luna, survey Venus, survey Icarus, survey Apollo and Flora. And it's just taking them based on, like, how far away they are from the current location, and it's going to do what it can. So, um, currently it's doing a, a geological survey of Luna. It's going to arrive in three minutes. <laughs> Two minutes? Oh! <laughs> Earth, Earth updated its location. Two minutes? And now it's doing a survey of the moon. We can actually zoom all the way in and we can see Luna. And Jer there's our geo-survey task group. So there it goes. We should probably rename... Um, nah, we don't need to rename the captain. I think we, it's fine. Having a couple names in the game is fun, but um, this is the story. You know, the story of our planet. It's fine. Geo Survey Task Group needs 173 points to survey Luna. Each point is going to be, uh, each each hour determines how quickly it can do it. And we can see here our Geo Survey ship um, does one per hour. Apparently, the current commander of this ship has no bonuses at all. 
um, who is in charge. We have no senior officer in the system. The task force commander is Com Commodore Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, hmm. It was created by being detached. From F6, we can see the individual ships. We can see a lot of information about it. I'm trying to see if there's a way I can appoint someone in charge who can uh, give us a survey bonus. Ship commander, none assigned. Oh, you know what I think I did? I forgot. Did I forget? I did. I forgot to click automated assignments. Oops. Probably plenty of comments on the first video. This will automatically appoint people in charge of ships. So, every five day increment. Let's just advance five days. And there we go. Ooh, lots of people just got assigned to, to things and stuff and places. And uh, Captain Tyler Mitchell has been assigned to the Discovery 001 with a survey bonus of 15%. So now when we go to that ship and we look at that ship's survey points, it's now 1.2. I guess it's rounding, probably. It's going to speed up how quickly it can actually do the survey, which is quite nice. Um, and I do think we want to rename that guy. So that was who? Captain Tyler Mitchell. Captain Class Tyler Mitchell. Rename. So who would we send into space to do our surveys for us? Hmm. Real life person. Hmm. Well. I could use Quill. I could send Quill 18 to do it. No. <laughs> you know people usually do in the, in, the, in the Twitch streams, they say you should use Donald Trump. So we'll use him. And the idea being is that we should send Donald Trump because we want to send him as far away from Earth as possible. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Okay. So Captain Donald Trump is uh, now doing our survey missions for us. Hopefully he finds stuff. Let's do all bodies, Earth, minimum zoom. There's just so much stuff that get reassigned that we can't actually even see anything on the map right now. Um, so we'll just have to go back to automatic five-day intervals. And I don't need to do anything right now. Like, the Geo Survey team is just going to automatically move around. It's already scanning some other place. Like, this this is a fast ship. Um, Fast-ish, you know. We, one thing we can check is if we go to our galactic map and then click on survey, we can see that we've already surveyed 46 system bodies in just a few short months. So he is cranking through this stuff. We can also go to display 2 and turn on show geo survey points to see like, you know, some of these asteroids take just 7 survey points. So if we're generating 1.2 per hour, it only takes like 5 hours to survey one of these asteroids. So in a 5 day tick, this guy can just knock them out. He's just, he's so fast. So. We're going to have this whole system charted very quickly. So the next thing we want to do is um, we need to start looking at, you know, setting up some more mining. We can see that on Venus, we uh, we have surveyed Venus now. We can see that there are resources. We've got a whole bunch of duranium, 10 million units of neutronium at accessibility 0.5. The duranium is low, low access, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, very, very low access, but tons of stuff on Venus. We have a, an asteroid or something here with a very small amount of duranium. We've got Mercassium on this thing. And then, of course, Earth has its own base resources. How are we doing on our industry? We still have a long way to go. We've only converted about, looks like, maybe 40% of the conventional stuff to the new stuff. But our construction rates, again, gone up by 700 compared to the last time I looked at it, which is good. We don't really need to build another ship. Um, I think we want to go back to our research and maybe maybe do some specialized research here because this is taking too long for anything new to come out. Like cryogenic transport would allow us to start doing colonists. Um, we could also try to design a freighter, a com like a just a small freighter to ship some infrastructure. And what we have to do is we have to like jumpstart the colonization of of this in this game. We're gonna have something called civilian shipping lines, and they're gonna do all kinds of stuff. We've got white. <laughs> That's funny. White House Transport Alliance. They're going to move stuff around for us, uh, from colonists to infrastructure to um, really anything we want them to move. We can have them move for us, and they'll do it all automatically. 
Um, but we, they won't start until we actually have a secondary colony outside of Earth. So we want to jumpstart that by getting something going on probably the moon. So let's see if we can just design a, a ship that we can use. The Napoleon? Uh, I don't know about that. Outreach? Oh, Outreach was good. I like that. Let's, let's use Outreach. The Outreach class um, colonization ship. Actually, no, we don't really need a colony ship. Let's not worry about shipping over colonists. Let's just worry about making a freighter. Outreach is still a good enough name for freighter, isn't it? Now let's get a different name for Rodney, the Queensland, Cornwallis. And Chihuahua. Oh, go to. There we go. I like that. The go to class freighter. <laughs> I like that. That's great. Okay, so this is something we want to make into a commercial vehicle. So this could be different than the uh, the first ship that we launched. Um, we are going to need to design probably a commercial engine for it because if we throw a, if we throw a military class engine onto it, it's automatically going to be classed as military. Um, just by putting one engine on there, bam, military class. So we do need to design a new engine. Might not be a bad idea to wait for a, uh, a new engine tech, but for now, let's just see like what we could design. We could have um, the 50 and then 25. Just a basic engine. It's not going to be as powerful as the 75 engine power engine. And it does cost 156 more research points. It's going to be more fuel efficient. But this is going to be... Um, uh, it's going to be fine. It's uh, 25 hull size or 1250 tons. The problem is that if we go and we try to design a ship that can move stuff around... And we try to use like a standard cargo hold. Look at how big the ship gets. 26,000 tons. The size is huge for a cargo hold. 500. 500 times 50. That's why... So it's 25,000 tons just in that thing right there. Um, if we tried using a smaller one, we could ship small amounts of infrastructure. I'm just wondering if maybe we could get by with like a 10,000 ton tiny freighter. For example, if we made an engine with a little bit more hull size. Fifty and twenty-five puts it at twelve hundred fifty tons. So we could maybe eke out, but we'd have to re reclass another thing. Maybe what we do is we wait for the next level of engine technology. And uh, we also build a commercial shipyard. Because I also don't want to have to repurpose the existing shipyard. There, there's a cost associated with changing what your shipyard can make. Right now, the assigned class, it can only make the GE Discovery. That's what it knows how to make. And if we want to make something else, we have to retool for a different class. The FT go-to. Um, freight transport, I think, is what that would be called. Cost of 55.1. So you have to spend stuff to make that happen. So yeah, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go back to this. We're gonna do some specialized research. Um, let's take a break from fuel storage research. We'll come back to it later. Cryogenic transport we do need. The uh, the research rate we'll take a break from. These other ones we'll take a break from. Um, let's just take a break. Let's just clear everything. I don't like this this like one on, one researcher per research lab thing. I want to knock out. Later on, we'll probably have to do it that way, but I want to knock things out one by one so that we can actually take advantage of them. Like, fuel consumption could be cool. Uh, what is it that we need right now? Well, I know that we do need... Um, we do need the cargo handling system for our freighter. We need... cryogenic transport to be complete. Let's just knock out cryogenic transport right now. Then we'll come back to it once we've got that done. So for now, let's just let, let people continue to survey the area. Uh, knock out this research. I want to get some bases up and running somewhat soon. Probably going to have to be in the next episode, though.
And if I keep this mineral one open, we should see more and more things showing up with minerals. And now that we're actually scanning down the solar system, I think what we'll also do is go to display two and we'll disable showing asteroids that have no minerals. So now the solar system is going to be a little bit more manageable um, and we can just see everything that we see has minerals. So like Lamberta, um, Asia apparently, Ceres, all this stuff. Where is our ship right now? It's currently two hours away from doing a survey of another asteroid that's probably somewhere in the belt. A team led on, on Earth led by De Declan Connolly has finished research into cryogenic transport. See, I just feel I like I just like when stuff gets done sooner. Okay. Okay, um We need cargo handling system. What's stopping me from making that engine? Making that thing? I just really need my research and my construction to get done. So construction might be worthwhile. Do the construction rate. It's going to cost quite a bit. We have a specialist. Oh, 45% bonus. Wow. And that that's the right, the correct matched field. So he gets a 4x modifier on that. So that's a 180% bonus to his research points. By all means, we should do this. Look at that. With five labs, which should only generate a thousand, he's getting 2,800. So he can knock this out in one year. I like that a lot. Of course, if we got this, then we could get even more research. Hmm. Probably the sooner we get that, the better. But let's uh, let's queue this up. Let's have him do both. Um, but let's have him do the construction rate first, because I want to get the rest of this industry converted over. Um, because then, as soon as that's done, we can start building more research labs and building more um, infrastructure and mass drivers and other things like that. So. Okay, I'm going to take a break here. I'll, uh, I'll look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Please leave some comments down below. I mean, again, I'm learning this game. I'm not an expert by any means, and I, I don't want you to think that I'm trying to pretend like I am one. We're just going to have fun and kind of poke around a bit and uh, see if we can lead civilization to greatness in the stars. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.